welcome to all of you, and thanks for joining us for this momentous occasion as we celebrate the completion of the New York, New Jersey Harbor Deepening Project. On behalf of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, I'd like to extend a special welcome and thanks to the many important dignitaries and guests here today. Henry Hudson first explored the river that bears his name in September of 1609. The future for potential future potential for port development within the New York and New Jersey Harbor and Estuary was evident. The settlements, colonies, and United States has remained a maritime nation ever since, dependent on the sea for both commerce and defense. At the time of Henry Hudson, the harbor had navigable depths of approximately 18 feet below the mean low watermark, and at that time it was far more than required to meet the draft needs of the ships of that era. As the ships got larger over time, the greater depths were required. Many navigation improvement projects began to emerge to keep the port of New York and New Jersey the largest port on the eastern seaboard of the United States. In fact, to illustrate this further, behind us sits the MOL Bravo with a gross tonnage of more than 113,000 tons, a 10,000 TU equivalent capacity. It's a Neo Panamax ship with a length of 1,105 feet a beam of 157 feet, and a maximum draft of 49.2 feet that carries about twice as many containers as the older Panamax ships, which you see sitting behind it. This backdrop reminds us about the huge impacts this project will have in the future. More than 90% of global trade moved by ship about the, time, about the time our nation was born, about 240 years ago, and still about 90% of our commerce moves by water. The authorized project provides water across the four port authority locations by deepening the Ambrose Channel from deep water in the Atlantic Ocean to the Baranzano Narrows Bridge, the Anchorage Channel from the Baranzano Narrows Bridge to its confluence with the Port Jersey Channel, which you're sitting at today, the Gil Van Cole Channel, the Main Newark Bay Channel to the Port of Elizabeth, and the Port of Elizabeth to the South Elizabeth Tributary Channels. The Arthur Kill Channel, and adjacent to, which is adjacent to the New York Container Terminal and the Port Jersey Channel. Dredging activities associated with the deepening of the New York, New Jersey Harbor have been proceeding nearly continuously since the passage of the Water Resources Development Act of 1986, authorizing the deepening of several main channels up to 45 feet. Construction began in 1989, 27 years ago. The harbor has been in continuous construction since, with the exception of a five-year gap in the late 1990s, when solutions of beneficially, of beneficially used dredge material were developed, thus solving what was termed mudlock. Announced on July 24, 1996, was an agreement that the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers would begin an expedited feasibility study of alternatives for a 50-foot deep port, with this study to be completed in 1999. The historic project cooperation agreement that resumed navigational channel improvements was signed on January 13, 1999 by then Vice President Gore, Senator Frank Lautenberg, then Congressman Robert Menendez, former Assistant Secretary of the Army for Civil Works, the Honorable Joseph Westfall, and Robert Boyle, the former Executive Director of the Port of New York and New Jersey. Concurrent with the authorization process, the Corps advanced the design 50-foot project between 2000 and 2004, and in response to congressional direction attached to the fiscal year 2002 Appropriation Act, the Corps evaluated and recommended consolidated implementation of the four authorized deepening projects previously authorized that were in construction at the time in January 2004. These inc included incorporating subsequent congressional direction to consolidate implementation of this project's construction with that of the four others already authorized. The Kill Van Cole and Newark Bay Channel, the 45-foot project, the Port Jersey 41-foot project, and the Arthur Kill 40-foot project, sponsored by the Port Authority of New York, New Jersey, and the Port Jersey Channel, which was primarily sponsored by the New York Department of Transportation Office of Maritime Resources. Later that year, on May 28, 2004, a project cooperation agreement was executed, executed with the Port Authority to begin federal construction of the 50-foot project construction. 
Through the use of advanced funding by our non-federal sponsor, the Port Authority of New York, New Jersey, construction of the 50-foot channels were already underway in 2004, consolidating construction around Bergen Point, New Jersey, a navigationally challenging channel area which had considerable areas of underlying diabased bedrock, a hard igneous rock of the same outcrop that forms the Palisade Bluffs along the Hudson River to the north. These advanced funds and permits acquired by the Port Authority allowed for a very efficient construction and the ability to limit impacts. Instead of blasting or dredging in different lifts according to the original authorizations, the consolidation implementation allowed this project to take place in one single lift, which avoided additional impacts to surrounding communities and providing a significant cost savings and reduction in the environmental, social, and scheduled impacts. Similarly, by foregoing segments of older channel designs, such as the 41-foot turning basin at the western end of the channel behind me, tens of millions of dollars were saved by consolidating implementation of the predecessor projects with the 50-foot project's design. Contracts were organized based on the dredge material, whether rock, sand, or silt, some contaminated, and others uncontaminated. Contaminated material was processed for beneficial use at upline sites such as landfills and brownfields redevelopment areas. Whereas the clean, uncontaminated material was beneficially used to remediate the ocean from impacts from historic waste dumping practices, creation of numerous fish reefs along both states' coasts, and the restoration of underwater habitats and wetlands at several locations in both states. This beneficial use was a fundamental goal of partners and stakeholders, and virtually all 52 million cubic yards of dredge material has been used in this manner. The effort has been a model for partnership, where we were able to create and use synergy to expedite the removal of dredge materials from the harbor without having major environmental impacts or having to close the port to navigation use. All the dredge material has been used beneficially for a variety of environmental mental and economic benefits. In 2013, Headquarters United States Army Corps of Engineers awarded the Harbor Deepening Project the Good Neighbor National Award for the efforts employed to minimize impacts to local communities and the environment during the execution of this project. Another long-term positive impact was a retrofit of the Staten Island ferries and dredge fleet engines to burn cleaner with significantly less impact on air quality. Although it was just a one-time offset, this had years of benefit and will continue to do so for years to come. President Obama named this a weekend weight infrastructure initiative in 2010, and it remained a top priority of USACE and the Congress in anticipation of a wider Panama Canal. In fact, this is one of the largest undertakings of its type in this nation's history. The total cost of the deepening program, which includes four separately authorized projects, was estimated at $2.96 billion and federal and non-federals for sponsored funding. However, in actuality, the deepening program has been completed having spent $2.1 billion. This equates to over $800 million in savings derived largely from the competitive economic dredging solicitations, consolidation of the elements from the different specific deepening projects, and modification of certain aspects of the projects. The project facilitates the needs of the region's 23 million consumers and over 100 million consumers along the East Coast and beyond. It also supports the local and regional economy, with more than 336,000 full-time jobs in the region, $21.2 billion in personal income, nearly $53.5 billion in business income, and almost $7.1 billion in federal, state, and local tax revenues. The port clearly plays a critical role in the economic health and well-being of the region. Likewise, the employers and employees of the port community support the businesses and the largest and most of the largest and most affluent or consumer market in the world. Today, the New York New Jersey Harbor Deepening Project serves as a model for others seeking integration of public interest opportunity where economic development, the environment, and navigational safety and security are not mutually exclusive, but all achievable when those involved partner to find solutions. It is an honor to celebrate this grand success today. Many of you here today were instrumental in driving this to completion, and you should be proud of your contributions. Thank you. Now it is my distinct honor 
to introduce our host for today's event, the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Civil Works, the Honorable Joellen Darcy. Ms. Darcy establishes policy, direction, and provides supervision of the Department of the Army functions relating to all aspects of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Civil Works program. These responsibilities include programs for conservation and development of the nation's water and wetland resources, flood control, navigation, and shore protection. She has served as the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Civil Works since August 11, 2009, and has continued to advocate for this project to ensure a successful completion. Ma'am. Thank you, Colonel Caldwell, and uh, welcome, everyone. Um, as the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Civil Works, um, there is nothing I could be prouder than um, to do today is to see this project to completion. Um, I want to thank uh, everyone who's here. Um, I want to thank Jake, who's here from, from the White House, um, and also all of our congressional members, um, some who are here, some who are unable to attend. But it, without their support um, and their diligence, um, none of us would be here today. Um, but there are also, I think, so many other heroes um, that need to be recognized for this deepening project. It's billions of dollars, as was said, and it's been decades in duration. And I think the professionals that made this project happen and this ceremony possible, not only at the Corps of Engineers but or the Port Authority, but so many who have been involved, our stakeholders, agencies, organizations, and other companies. Um, to the, to um, that end, the success of this program's construction is not just the result of our partnerships, but also of these individuals that work tirelessly to achieve the success that we're celebrating today. Um, I do want to acknowledge and thank some of our long-standing partners. Lillian Barone, um, I think she is here today. I'm not sure everybody's going to be here. That Lillian told me she was here, I think, with, with then Congressman Menendez when they signed the PPA back in 96. So people have been working on this for a long time, so I hope that they're really excited to be here today to see this finished. Um, also, Rick um, Larrabee, I don't know if he's here. Chris, um, um, Chris Ward, is Chris here? Um, Chris Ward. They're all formally with the Port Authority and, and their leadership you know, from those years ago helped to uh, lay the basis for this success here today. Um, and also here today, I think, from the Port Authority is Tom Costanzo. Yes. Is Steve Dorier here? Thank you. Um, Atap Ahmed, is he here in the back? project day in and day out so um, and for years and they've done that to advance this project um, and of course you're going to hear later from um, Molly Campbell who's the current director of the uh, Port of Commerce Department here and Andy Saperito who's your deputy I can teach you too um, they've all been outstanding partners um, there are also some people here from from New Jersey there's Frank McDonough is Frank here he's over there Suzanne is Suzanne Dietrich here Suzanne's in the back um, Scott Douglas, these are all uh, our friends from New Jersey who've been key players who've helped with identifying the beneficial uses for dredge materials that, that uh, Colonel Caldwell talked about earlier. And as he said, it was referred to back then as mudlock, you know, it's like gridlock only it was mudlock, um, but because of your efforts um, and your diligence, um, you unlocked it and you, you came up with solutions. Um, it was in cooperation with our solutioneers, who is your Army Corps of Engineers. So thank you all for that. Um, also is Steve Zan here and Andrew Gen, who are respectively from the state of New York and the city of New York. They're in, they're in the um, they helped a lot with, with working through the regulations that needed to be, um, be met, as well as the beneficial uses of dredge material, as well as economic development within this great, it's a bi-state port. And that's not always an easy thing to do, but thank you for, for your help and work on that. And lastly, here within the core family, I want to personally thank Bill Slezak um, and Bryce Blackmiller. Um, they worked on this program for a very long time. One is project manager, one is the um, program manager. Um, and I also want to recognize Tom Shea and Steve Weinberg. Are here today. Jamal here, Jamal Sunimon. Um, 
well as Pete Kepler and Kate. Is Kate here? Kate Alcoba? Yes, she's in the back there. And Joe Alham, Alan Simon, Sam Dittato. I always get her name on my phone. Um, and Mark um, Cusera, among so many others on our team. But um, they, again, have worked on this project tirelessly for a very long time. And without their efforts and their commitment, I don't think we'd be here today. So let's hear it for all of those people. This project is expected uh, to nearly return seven times as much economic uh, benefit as we've put into it. Um, it's a worthy project for the Corps of Engineers' legacy and it's going to continue our commitment to, pro to uh, pro uh, provide enduring value to the nation. The Corps has actively been involved in doing evaluations for the need for our increased water depth um, due to the increase in container size, as you can see behind us, um, and that of the traditional Panamax um, class container ships. And we've been doing this for about the last 15 to 20 years to prepare for this kind of, kind of day that we have today. Um, about one third of the total Army Corps of Engineers Civil Works budget today is used to study um, and construct and replace and rehabilitate operate and maintain our commercial navigation infrastructure at approximately 13,000 um, miles of coastal channels as well as 12,000 miles of inland waterways. This includes 241 locks and 196 lock and dam sites. So we have a pretty big program and this is right now one of the showcases I think of, of our program. Um, as well as all of you know, transporting goods on the water is not only more cost effective, but better for the environment. So um, I think that this is another example of how we can look to the future of not only sustainability, but also economic development. President Obama recognized these challenges and, and the needs of our U.S. maritime transportation system. And in 2012, he took um, executive action to speed up the permitting process that gets uh, work done earlier and sooner. Um, and as uh, Colonel Caldwell referenced, the We Can't Wait initiative, um, the administration announced this back then, and the New York, New Jersey Harbor Deepening was one of those initiatives. And that was in recognition not only of the importance of the navigation system, but it's also not only for our exports, but it creates jobs as well as reduces greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and it also um, supports about $2 trillion annually and employs 13 million people in this country. It's also forecasted now that our containerized ships are going to continue to grow in the near future. The world's shipping companies are building larger, more efficient container vessels. And now at a 50-foot depth, this harbor can be part of that future. Um, and the Panama Canal locks are ready. Uh, I was there with General Seminite in June. Uh, for the expansion ceremony, and it truly was a sight to see. Um, they're really, really big ships, um, and they're coming our way. So um, we're proud of this accomplishment for the Corps of Engineers. Um, we work closely with the Port Authority, as well as the Department of Transportation, and, and others within the administration to be able to be here today. Um, and I just want to again thank everyone, um, and I apologize if I've forgotten some folks, but it, again, it's, it's a team effort, it's an incredible partnership that we've had with the Port of New York and New Jersey, um, and we're very proud of this accomplishment. And now I'd like, um, we're going to hear from um, Jake Broderfinger, I'm sorry, Finger, um, who's the Senior Policy Advisor at the White House Council on uh, the National Economic Council. Um, he's been helping lead the President's initiative on Build America initiatives, um, and he's here not only to support us, but also to let us know about some of those initiatives and how we're going to be having water as one of our top infrastructure priorities. And I think this shows that it is a priority as well as a way that we can make progress, not only for the economy, but for the future of the country. So, thanks everybody. Assistant Secretary Darcy for that uh, very kind introduction. Uh, and I'd also like to just take a moment before I start to, to give a big round of applause to Assistant Secretary Darcy. As many of you know, she's, she's actually the longest serving Assistant Secretary of the Army Civil Works. Uh, and she has uh, taken the role with great dedication and passion, and uh, we really appreciate everything you do. So thank you. It's, uh, it's an honor uh, to be here today and uh, celebrate 
this important event, uh, not only for the great states of New York and New Jersey, and also for the, the port, but this is also uh, an incredibly important day for the, the country and our economy more broadly. And, and I want to spend just a couple minutes uh, talking about our economy. Uh, as I'm sure many of you know, uh, when the president took office in 2008, the, the economy was not in a good place. We were losing 800,000 jobs a month, 800,000 jobs a month. And since 2008, we've seen the longest streak of consistent job growth this country has ever seen. Uh, we've gained 15 million jobs, and we've taken unemployment from about 10% to 4.9%. And as you unpack some of those numbers, one of the, the drivers, one of the reasons why our economy has, uh, has come back has been exports. Uh, since 2010, we've seen a 47% increase in exports. Roughly 12 million jobs are supported in this country by exports. And, it, you know, it's just, it's, it's evidence as you look at the export numbers that the rest of the world wants what we make here in America. And this, this project today, the bigger, uh, the, the deep import, the bigger ships will allow us to do, do more exporting and allow our country to continue to grow. And it is, it is also worth noting that, you know, this, is, this project is a great reminder of why we need to continue to push to pass TPP, which, as many of you know, is a trade agreement with the Pacific, which will allow us to more easily get our products in the hands of people overseas who want to buy American. Um, so, uh, today's celebration is, is certainly uh, a great reminder of what we can do uh, when we come together. Uh, and as uh, Assistant Secretary Darcy mentioned, there are a lot of stakeholders here who really came together in a phenomenal way, took the President's call to action, and got this project done. Uh, and it's great to see it actually get over the finish line. Um, as the President has said, ports like this one help keep the economy going. They move products, they move people, and they make sure that businesses are working the way they should. Um, so while today is certainly a day to be proud of, uh, I, I think it's also a good reminder uh, that we need to invest in ports, in water, in our country's infrastructure, and do the hard work to keep the arteries of our economy flowing. Thank you. Please welcome to the podium Lieutenant General Todd Seminite, Chief of Engineers, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Well, good morning. On behalf of Secretary of the Army Fanning and Chief of Staff of the Army Millie, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be with us today and providing so much support for this important project. The United States Army Corps of Engineers would not have been able to build this magnificent infrastructure without the support of many of our stakeholders. And I'm pleased to see many of our distinguished stakeholders here today. Ms. Darcy, without a doubt, thanks for you've been uh, behind this all the way as well as so many other great things in uh, Civil Works infrastructure and uh, your, uh, your personal leadership made this happen. Uh, obviously, uh, Mr. Broderfinger, thanks for being here from uh, Washington. From Washington. Uh, Ms. Campbell, uh, great work in the Port Authority, and to our Senators, uh, phenomenal uh, work all the way behind to be able to continue to push this. So many other elected officials, both from the federal government, from the state and local governments, and all the stakeholders out there. This really is a big day. I want to commend every individual who labored tirelessly on the New York and New Jersey 50-foot harbor deepening throughout any part of this project's life cycle. No one accomplishes anything alone, and projects of this magnitude, like the one we're celebrating today, are made possible with robust collaboration among diverse stakeholders. They're also made possible with reliable funding, which enabled the Corps of Engineers to aggressively and efficiently do the job that needed to be done. The New York and New Jersey 50-foot harbor deepening will benefit the safety, the prosperity, and the sustainability of this region. Supersized ships from Asia will now have direct all-water shipping access to ports on the Gulf of Mexico and the East Coast, giving companies cheaper options for shipping in time and cost savings to consumers. Bigger ships and more cargo can result in an economic boom for a port, and research demonstrates that shipping over water is the most environmentally sound and efficient method of transportation when compared to air, rail, and truck. And for context, respected to the East Coast alone, 
Uh, the core studies have identified investments in deep in coastal harbors and ports, totaling several billions of dollars. That's a big investment for this country. But what's important, and Ms. Darcy alluded to it, is that the economic evaluations indicate this investment would return over $1.5 billion annually to be able to continue to be able to support every single year, and that's extraordinary, a great investment for our country. This project is a vital piece of an ever more efficient and effective system that's linking goods to the people to the goods and services they need and want. The infrastructure the United States Army Corps of Engineers provides is enabling that system. Completion of the New York and New Jersey Harbor project adds a fourth East Coast port with a depth of 50 feet capable of handling the large Neo Panamax container ships and other large vessels coming through the recently opening New Panama Canal. Our Corps of Engineers and our stakeholders have recently completed projects in Baltimore, Norfolk, and Miami, and are either doing construction or final design on over 12 other major ports around the country to attain 50-foot depth. I think the big thing here, not only is this a phenomenal accomplishment with dredging all of this material, but you need to understand that to be able to do this in an environmentally sound way is, is unprecedented. 52 million cubic yards you're taken out of the ground and to be able to find a, put, a place to put that, and as Dave Gobble said, some of that could be contaminated. How do you in fact turn that material around to be able to do all the things that Dave talked about? We build marshes, be able to take care of our some of our ocean areas. Uh, unbelievable uh, accomplishment and what it really, really shows is you can achieve a large harbor deepening project for the good of the economy while at the same time balancing the environment and even continuing to foster habitat and ecosystem restoration. So I look at this as a world-class accomplishment. There will be people that come from other parts of the world to be able to see what happened here, what you all did together, and as a team, how you pulled to be able to make it happen. In closing, I just wanted to let you know I'm on my 100th day as the new Chief of Engineers. I'm going to be with you for four years. I pledge my personal support to stand by the citizens of this region to help solve our nation's most critical challenges. Whether it's supporting New York and New Jersey soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan, building military installations throughout these states, re, um, continuing to be able to construct and to renovate uh, VA hospitals for our veterans, performing environmental cleanup for the region, performing disaster relief efforts like we did in Superstore Sandy, or supporting navigation projects like this one here on the ground, your Army Corps of Engineers will continue to be Army strong and building strong. Thanks so much for your support. Thank you.